everybody. I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, I had a busy weekend. I guess it was pretty good too. Got to see a lot of family, but I was barely home. So I didn't really get to research a whole lot about the terrain mesh, but luckily there's not much that we need to do. Um, so if I remember correctly, most of the normals were working correctly, except um, on these slopes, they don't, like, they still think that the default up position is pointing straight up instead of outwards from the slope, because we just only take the height map into account, not the actual elevation. Um, let's, uh... Make sure that's true. Yeah, so like right here, these normals should be pointing outwards like that. And also these normals should probably be, like there should be two green lines pointing out from this one up and then one that way. Uh, well, no, I won't want to do that because then, um, There'd be a seam right there, so it'll need to be smoothed. Okay, so how do I want to handle this? Maybe instead of... I guess in order to find the normal at any of these positions, we actually need to know all six of the neighbors. That's kind of... Hmm. That's a lot of data to have to take into account. Because kind of what I think, or how I think we'll, I would do it is somehow with here, we would find the normal just pointing straight out from each of the, the neighbors and then average this one to be the same as those. I guess we'd really only, like this will only happen. We'd only need to average on points that are on the margin because that's where these bumps are but well when I make more complicated edge or like margin cliffs or something that would that might change hmm uh maybe the best thing to do this is going to change our algorithm a bit. Is we calculate all the points, and then once we know all the points, we calculate the normals. So there'll be three steps. We calculate the point positions, then the normals, then the triangles. I think that's what we'll have to do. That won't be too difficult. Okay, yeah, I think, um, and I'm just trying to think. If it's on the, like, for the hexagon, it's on the edge, so it won't. So they all point up except for. Except for ones that are on the margin. So maybe, okay, we can do this a little simpler.
Okay, I'm just trying to think how to get started. All right, so I guess what I'm trying to find is just make new point. So maybe I'll just need to make new versions. Of, well, we need to extract the normal data out. Or do I actually, okay. So yeah, for any vertex that's on a hex face that's not on the edge, then the normal just points straight up and then it would be perturbed by the bump map. If it's on the edge, then we just need to see the height of the, um, neighbor and then we could s figure out the normal that way because we just blend it and i guess when we add in more complicated um cliff faces we can just take the slope of those cliff faces into account in the calculation i think that'd be probably easier than trying to calculate the positions of all points because right now our functions only calculate the positions for a certain area of the mesh. And I kind of want to keep it that way so that later on, when Unity's new job system comes out, we can um, take the parallel processing or the parallel nature of this algorithm and leverage it with multi-threading to make this terrain generation really quick. So in, yeah, in general, I want each mesh section to only depend on itself. All right, so um, I guess what I'll have to do is on this make new point, I'll need to introduce another argument, which would be the, the default normal position. So I guess up direction. And then we would pass that, or we wouldn't pass it anywhere, but I guess we'd pass it to this make normal. So let's do that first. All right, so this would be the Perturb. I don't think I spelled that right. <laughs> um, I guess this will just be the height. Slope. Oh, I know this will be like the height map normal. So we'll do that. And what we need to do is rotate this so that... Because this assumes that the up vector... Um, point straight up. So if this doesn't point straight up, we need to rotate this height normal in the same direction. So we can use uh, the quaternion uh, two up. So we use this function from two rotation and the from rotation is vector three up. And then the two direction is whatever vector we, we give in here. And again, quaternions are kind of hard to understand. They're like a way to represent a 3D rotation that turns out to be a lot easier than using um, angles and axes. So um, you don't really have to know the inner workings if you just rely on these helper functions. And that's um, pretty much what I'm going to do. I have researched them a little bit because I was just um, interested, but it has to do a lot with like imaginary numbers it's a bit outside my math knowledge okay so anyway um, we have this rotation so now we can rotate this height normal by this uh, rotation 
And to do that, you just do two up times height normal. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that that math is correct by just passing in up and um, just testing that. Um, okay, there's an error already. I don't think I changed anything else. Oh yeah, the other versions of the make new point that also call the make normal. Okay, once it's done compiling, we should be able to test it out. I heard that the new Unity is also supposed to compile a lot quicker, which um, I'm looking forward to. Because it always is a little strange how you change barely anything about code and it takes like 20 seconds or whatever to compile. Okay, so this still looks fine. Um, yeah, we can see that the vectors are still being perturbed by the normal map here. They're not all pointing straight up. So now if I change this, for instance, to vector 3 right, every normal vector should be rotated 90 degrees so that it's um, perturbing the x-axis. Which will make the lighting look really weird. But... We're just testing it right now. Yeah, so now everything is pointing yeah, along the x-axis like I thought. And it's still being perturbed by the normal map. So that's interesting. Oh, why does it make... I'm surprised by that because I didn't think that the shaders cared about the normals when they decided what to call. I thought it went by the triangle winding. Oops, oh, I, was, I didn't mean to click on that. Okay, so now I know that the math is pretty... Uh, on point. So if I change this to uh, normal up, and we'll just take care of no blending right now to make sure this works. Now where did I introduce any errors? Oh, because yeah, these call back this. Okay, well I guess um, I better go ahead and update it all. Because I probably will introduce a problem if I don't. Um, we shouldn't have to blend between these normal up vectors because it depends on just the position and not the prototypes. All right, so if we go back up here, again, these are easy because it's not on the edge, so we can just pass in a default up. And I think I'm just gonna get rid of the errors by passing in up for all these right now. Now here, um, let's see, so it'd be if, the point ring was the last ring, so it would be point ring, that would be this number of point rings, which is num points at hex edge.
All right, so uh vector three normal up is vector three up and then if um p is num points yeah num point rings minus one which is the last one that we need to change this so for now i'm just going to do vector three all right normal up equals vector three right just so to make sure i got this logic correctly or logic, <laughs> logic correct. Okay. Yeah, there's uh, some weird stuff right here because it's blending the normals in a strange way. Not really sure why this lighting is weird, but I guess we'll see. Okay, why is it? Oh, okay. No, it's correct. So, yeah, here, yeah, they're pointing up, except you'll see that there's two green. Now, why is that pointing right, actually? I'm not sure why that one's pointing like that. Did I add that to the wrong thing? X fan ring points. That's not part of the margin. Yeah, it's vector 3 up, vector 3 up. Oh, I didn't... I think I... Didn't update these functions. And yeah, this still always points right instead of using the new past value. Okay, let's try that one more time. Okay, so at least there's no... Strange lighting artifacts, which should be a little strange, but. Okay, so yeah, the math is wrong because there should be at these edges, there should be something pointing right and then another one pointing up. And the ones that are on the right are uh, on the hexagon face. Um, so let me see where did I get mess that up. Uh, oh, it's not P. It should be um, if point ring is the last ring. Um. That's I can change this to a boolean actually. Is last ring. And the reason that I can't like pre calculate this normal up is because Oh, I guess I could because this value Oh well, no. I was gonna say this value is constant depending on the fan ring because it would point towards the slope but the ones on the corner actually point yeah they're average between all the slopes so it's not exactly Okay, yeah, so now there's some weird lighting because the game is trying to smooth the normal from pointing straight up to pointing to the right. And if we look here, yeah, so these ones pointing to the right are on the face, while the ones pointing up are the vertices that are in the same position, but they're part of the slope. 
Okay, so now I need to figure out a function I can pass this position and then it will calculate an averaged normal based on all the slopes of the neighboring points. Which for now this normal is constant for the entire slope, so that does make things a little simpler. It might be different when um, I have more complicated slopes, but I mean it still should be calculatable based on the slope type and everything, so. Uh, let's see. Private vector three. Get, um, let's say, figure normal up for edge. Let me think. Well, let's test one other thing. If um, I go in here and I change the block prototype perturb amounts. To something pretty big. Because I wonder if, like, the jaggedness, that would affect the normal one in it. I don't really notice it that much. Except, if you take a look at the difference between the visible mesh and the collider, you can see a difference. And so the, if it was straight on, the normal would point out from this direction, but now since it's been distorted, the normal is skewed a bit. It's actually skewed quite a lot because the distort amount is really big, but... Okay, so yeah, that complicates things quite a bit. Maybe it's the best way. Maybe the best way to do it is to just wait until we've made the actual mesh and then cycle through every triangle and calculate the... Oh no, because the triangles don't actually Tell about all neighbors, so we'd have to make our own data structure. Or the normal would just need to take the distort amount into consideration. Okay, this has actually gotten a lot more complicated than I thought it was when I booted up the game today. So it looks like I actually thought I was going to have some trouble with this math and not so much figuring out the up direction. The problem is now this normal depends on all the neighbors of a point instead of being able to just make it from just the point. So let's bring this back down to how it was. Uh, 
Oh, it's already on shaded wireframe. So for example, this point, I mean, it really just depends on these two slopes, but the thing is that if these neighbors are perturbed outward, that would also change the direction of this normal. And then it also begs the question that if we're doing all this, should I even use the height map to help determine the normal ups, or should I just calculate it based on what the actual neighbor vertices are? Well, no. Um, okay, I think... So maybe the best thing to do here would actually be to take a couple passes. The first pass just figures out all the points for the mesh. And the second pass figures out all the normals and the third pass figures out all the triangles. We can still parallel parallelize that because I think each of those sections will only depend on a small subsection of data. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to, well, actually we won't have to change too much because we already kind of do that. It's just, we'll have to store all of these point. Try point somehow. And I can't, like, right now we can, like, every, um... Well, there's never going to be, like, a random number of... points for one hexagon, but it won't always be constant because if... Like I keep on saying, if we have more complicated slopes, which I want to definitely have, that would be configurable based on the terrain type. And that'll have a different number of vertices, so... Kinda need to... Um, store all the point data on like a per hexagon basis. And now since I'm going to do that, maybe we can actually make the Mesh Collider just use the same points, although... It will have a lot more points, so I guess it depends on how... Um, ...accurate I want it to be. I could at least perturb these edges. So yeah, I guess the Mesh Collider could kind of jump in the algorithm at any point it wanted to. All right, so, um, okay, so yeah, this is going to be a pretty big thing. Let's go ahead and get like the groundwork done and then I think I'll come back. And maybe we'll just skip the normal section for now. And then get the triangles working so we can at least make sure that still works. Alright, so the terrain um, mesh class. Right now, it like just delegates out the information, but since I'm going to be adding in a bunch of passes, it'd be kind of nice if I could treat this as like its own little subcontained world that 
And then each of these classes just jumps in whenever it's needed to. Kind of like uh, the entity component system. So let's see, how will I start this? I still like this blueprint builder because it generates like some very basic stuff for the map. And then from there we can go and make all the points for the graphics mesh. Kind of try to subdivide all the different algorithms. Okay, so let's see. Let's make a new class here, which will be just like, I don't know, terrain, gen, state. I'm trying to decide if this is the best way how it because <laughs> I've been thinking about the new Unity's new system of course and how you would do it something like this in the new system would be you'd schedule a bunch of jobs and then they'd wait for each one to complete in sequence and so I'm trying to figure out a way that I can do that now without having to make them kind of aware of a state variable I don't think that there's an easy way to handle dependencies right now, so we'll just kind of do something hacky in the meantime. And the terrain mesh controller itself will wait until each subcomponent is done and then decide when the next one should run. Um. Okay, subsystem ready. Idle waiting and complete. And then we'll just have a bunch of different variables in here for different types. So we'll want to have blueprint. Um points uh, the collider normals and triangles and then I'll have a final one to build the mesh And so what I'll do is, at the beginning, the train gen will just set everything to waiting. I guess idle and waiting, there's not really much a reason to have them separate, but just in case. Oh no, yeah, there's no reason to have that. Because I'll be waiting by default. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, idle would mean that there's nothing going on, but waiting means that maybe it's received some data, but it's waiting for something else to complete. Whereas if it goes to idle, that means it needs to dispose. I don't know. They're slightly different. 
But so the blueprint one has no dependencies, so it would just run when um, waiting, when blueprint waiting is set to true, and then it, when it's done, it'll set it to complete. And then at this point, the points and the collider can run. And then when points is complete, normals and triangles can run. And then when normals and triangles are complete, mesh can run. Yeah, so we have this chunk. That's another thing that complicates it because it, everything has to... We have to subdivide everything for the chunks, but maybe that only matters for the mesh. Yeah, well, no, points should be different too because otherwise the point array is going to get really huge. Okay, so then I guess we'll need to have one of these variables for every chunk. So let's change this to chunk state and then I'll just have the normal. Now the blueprint, does it run once for every chunk? I think so. Um, look for this. Oh yeah, for every chunk it does the blueprint builder. Okay, that's what I was looking for. And so this will just have a uh, chunk state. I know this isn't like completely component entity because normally you would actually have this and then you just create four entities, one for every chunk, but we don't actually have support for a component entity system right now, so I am um, just going to do a more object-oriented uh, pattern until Unity's thing comes out. Um, I guess it should be a list because we don't, well, we do know the number. But I guess we want to reuse the list. I don't know if that matters. Doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Okay, and since we're going to use a list, I'll go ahead and have a constructor here that just creates that. So I guess I could also move some of this other information into there. Like the number of active chunks. It doesn't seem I actually ever use that. Oops. And yeah, I'll leave these because they're actually not part of the train generation state they would actually be different entities if we ever had that system so i can change this to uh terrain gen chunks oh no just state and i'll actually nothing except for inside the terrain generation system is going to need the state so i'm not gonna bother adding it to the component system. We'll just pass it through to um, the rest of the system. Okay, I guess I can also, these are like the final um, data f for the system. So really, I think we'd want to move this into a separate component, but like I said, we don't have a component system up and running. Um, 
Let's see. Maybe it'd be better to have... Something like this. And then these don't have to be uh, public, actually. So now this will just be... A separate object in here. I don't really know if it's needed, but it doesn't cause any problems. Yeah, this the mesh builder will deposit actually yeah the collider would do that too but yeah these builders will just deposit that data in this graphics mesh when it's done all right so here it's creating them Um, I guess that's still okay, but well, no, because now, yeah, but now we actually do this all in one frame. I'm surprised there's nothing of our hang hung. I mean, excuse me. Okay, so now we'd still do this. Maybe, do I need to put this? It doesn't look like anything actually needs the number of chunks. So what we'd actually do is move this code to the top. And I think we'd clear all chunks, wouldn't we? At this point. So we can actually do something like this. Clear. And then state dot num active chunks. Thought I added that. Maybe it's still private. All right, um, so I won't want to build or generate these classes right now. I'd actually want to do it here. Um, and I won't. Yeah, I don't think I actually need to keep a reference to them because the whole point is that they depend on this state data. So I'll just create them here. One of my favorite things about um, um, Unity's new entity component system is that it has, it automatically creates um, systems for you so you don't have to call the constructors. I think that's so cool. Um, yeah, so the other classes we're going to need to update, so... Although I guess I can go ahead and stop and create them for now. Because the graphics mesh generator will actually just be the very last part now instead of the entire graphics generation system. Alright, so we take that out and then in this part... It creates the meshes, but we'll move that into the graphics mesh creator. And here it's like, yeah, this whole part will be in there. 
And so, yeah, we don't actually call this either. We still do cycle through it, but only because we need to reset the state for everything. Okay, so let's see. Chunk state. And then C state, I need to just, again, this is kind of hacky, but um, hopefully um, Unity's new system will make this a lot easier to use. Well, from what I've seen, it will, anyway. And this is waiting. Because, like, if I was working in the new Entity component system, what I would do is just schedule a new job for each of these things here, and then they would automatically have dependencies, and when the dependencies free up, they would just automatically run, and so I wouldn't have to track this myself. Which I'm so excited for that, but even though it's coming in April, I think it's going to be very bare bones, so I don't know if I'll be able to use it then. Unfortunately. Okay, so we set all that to waiting. Um, one other thing I just remembered is these state are these do need to be called like their update function at least needs to be called. Okay, so I wonder hmm, what the best way, because there's two ways I could have it update. Either the terrain mesh itself it's the update function or something else calls update on it and I think I'm leaning towards the second option there okay so I don't really need to I guess I do need to keep a reference to all these so I can call the update function on them What do I call it in Beluga? I know I have something like that. Oh, I guess you actually just subscribe. Okay. Then I need to create another interface here. Let's actually call it update because that's what Unity will use. What's it not like about that? Oh yeah, I have to put I at the beginning of a constructor. I mean, an interface. So we'll just go ahead and implement this real quick. Oops. I turn. 
Terrain Mesh Builder. Who would have thought that just trying to get smooth normals would have maybe have to redesign this entire system, but I guess it's for the better because the train mesh generator was gigantic. Okay, and I know that systems right now is null, and I always forget to create these little lists, so hopefully I'll remember once I add them all here. Um, I'll change this to update. We don't really care about the order here. Okay, so let's update this. This would be um, state num active chunks. All right, and this is state chunks. Yeah, this is a bit of a weird thing. Chunk, chunk, chunk. All right, and the only other thing I need to add here is to make sure that the terrain mesh is complete or not. And I think what I'll do is I'll just use this same enumeration. For the entire thing. Which, yeah, I guess we'll also need that. Well, okay, we'll know that it's complete when the mesh and the collider are complete. So maybe I don't need that. Well, in that case, we could... Well, I kind of want to keep track of this, so... Um... So first we need to see um, if state that total is waiting. Then we need to s search through the system to see if any chunk is still not done. So bool all complete is true. Um, so let's see. For well, we don't really care which one is done, so we can just use for each chunk and state chunks. So yeah, if the collider is done and the mesh is done. Then the entire thing is done. So I can set if all complete, then we'd set state total to complete. And then if state, if we're waiting for something, then we need to call update. Otherwise, we don't have to do anything. And so here I should set the state total to waiting. And then public pool is complete. All right. 
And then I guess when clear is called, we'd want to set it to uh, idle because we don't have any information anymore. Okay, now where is the function that gets this initial load? So I need to have private void tick Controller, um, let's see. And priority would just be UX. Oh yeah, it has, we have to cast that to int. And that also gives us an activatable gate, which It just lets us turn off and on the ticking subscription. Okay, so on signal, we would want to call generate. Yeah, then we won't, now it won't be complete right away. Alright, so first we'll call terrain update, and then if terrain is complete, then we would first unsubscribe to the getting uh, tick calls, and then we would set work complete. And that just signals back to the rest of the game that the terrain is done being generated. And okay, so I think that is all done. Um, if I play, I don't think anything would actually happen yet. Oh yeah, we just get an error that says not implemented. So this build is never called anymore, so I can just make it private. And unfortunately, we can't really support multi-threading. Well, I guess we could because we don't actually use any Unity things, but um, there's not much of a point. So just on our first update, if um, we'll just cycle through each chunk. Uh, I guess we'll need to get the terrain mesh state. Uh, okay, it's called terrain gen state. Okay, and this should also be passed. So C state chunks. I guess I could also just use this num active chunks. Uh, I also need to check if we even need to run. So if state. Oh yeah, I have to do that on a per chunk basis. So. So if it's waiting, then we'll build it and then it's set to complete because it will always be complete after this. Uh, 
All right, so now the Smash Blueprint is just returned. Be kind of nice. Because the Smash Blueprint already only has information about the cells, which, again, is kind of what I want. So it would be nice if we could... Again, I wish I could have, like, a cell entity, but... see here um, I think the best way is just to keep this how it is and then just insert this into the terrain gen state so blueprint Yeah, that'll be the best way to do it for now. And then at some point, inevitably, when we come back to edit this... Oop. To make it work with Unity's... Um, ...job and Entity Component System will... ...also... ...actually use separate entities. Um, yeah. um, so I guess I can still just do that and then we'd actually set the state trunk C dot Oh, I didn't mean to call this blueprint state. It should be blueprint data, but maybe I can call this blueprint state Oh, now it's going to complain because they're both the same I'm looking for here. All right, so I might as well update the collision mesh generator just because it only depends on the blueprint, and that way we can test that the system sort of makes sense. Yeah, we could. Separate the collision mesh generator also the same way we're doing the graphics mesh, but it is considerably simpler, so I don't know if it's really needed. Um. I guess this would be private now. And I can use this type of thing as the same pattern for collision mesh. I would just change uh, blueprint state to collision. Oh, we don't even have the terrain gen state yet. I wouldn't have that. And really, if this was a pure system, We'd want to have these in a separate entity as well. Because, um, yeah, one of the main things about the entity component architecture is that you don't have any data in the um, classes with logic. Okay, so this, um, it doesn't return anything, but let's say build or generate, I think is what I called it.
I don't really need to pass this. I can figure itself figure it out for itself if I give it the chunk index. Okay, so triangle owners equals state chunks. Chunk index dot mesh dot. Oh wait. Chunk. There we go. And then this. Okay, I guess I can still keep a reference to it around. Okay, so state chunks. And then the blueprint data. This is state chunks. Collision mesh. Okay, so that just inserts everything in there. All right. And I think if I go back in here and oh yeah, I have to give this a state and I'll comment this out for now because we're not going to have any graphics and I need to pass the state here. So hopefully we'll get the collision mesh. Um, container constructor, oh right. Although, okay, one problem right now is that since I don't do the mesh or the graphics, I need to comment this out so it only looks to see if the collider is done. Arguments out of range. Six thirty. Oh no, that's not right. Train mesh eighty six. Right here, probably because I had to use. Oh yeah, if it's out of state, I need to create a new one. So. Also, I need to create a new collision mesh if it doesn't exist yet. Yes, so if mesh is null. Uh, there we go. And then this is chunk index and then I need to set it back to here. I should probably just do this at the end anyway. And if triangle owners is null, we also need to set this up. All right, um, okay, so that fixes that bug. But down here, yeah, I just need to, if the state hasn't been initialized yet, then I just need to add it. Okay. So if C state dot, oh no, it'd be if state chunks, count is less than I. I don't know why it 
added that if there for me. Or probably an easier way. Or that would make more sense as if i is greater than or equal to the count. And we create a new one. And then add it to the chunks list. Okay, yeah, it's complaining that it's not initialized, maybe, so I need to call that and then else. Okay, so now that's all good. I think that should fix that null reference. At least now it's no errors. Okay, object reference not set to an instance. Probably it's trying to deal with the... Oh, um, so either the database metrics or the board is null. Okay, so train mesh tick, train update. How would that be no? Because I passed the values here and they're just passed to us by something else and we never had a problem with it before. Okay, well, I think the only way to find out what's wrong is to try and figure out which of those values is null, so We'll log the board and then log database and then log metrics. I don't really know what I've done that could make any of these be null because we just are inheriting code from before that worked. Okay, so the board is set to null. Uh, probably because, okay, I think I know what's wrong. Yeah, at this point, the board hasn't been generated yet, I don't think. Uh, apparently not, anyway. Yeah, because this is called on the constructor and not when the work starts. So uh, what I need to do is the blueprint builder should just take a reference to the battle instead of the, the board. And then all references, it's not used a whole lot. Oh, I didn't rename that variable. Okay, so that should fix that. Um, okay, so it actually uses the board a lot more and other variables, so... Okay, we'll do a little... bit of laziness here to help with that. Or do I want to? I don't think so, actually. We can just reassign that variable. Oh, there's another null error. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought I just checked to make sure that that did not happen. Oh. Actually, it hasn't. I, need, I hadn't restarted it yet. Okay. 
Uh, there we go. Uh, something else. Another object reference. Okay, so at some point we're passing a null board. The map gen is at the final loading stage, so it should have been created by this point. Let's see. At collision mesh generator, okay, 91. Maybe I do the same thing. Do I give it the battle? Yeah, I just give it the board, so... Can't do that anymore. Gosh, I can't type. Okay, and then wherever I use that, which is not that often... I'll just go like that. All right. Uh, except now I need to pass the battle. Okay, same thing happens with the graphics mesh, but I'll update that when the time comes. Okay, so now I gotta wait for it to compile. That didn't take too long. Okay, so now it seems to have gone through all the way. One way I can test is if I go into the scene and see if the collision... Yeah, so the collision meshes are all still there and... Yeah, there's still that hill. So I think um, everything is working okay. So now let's start breaking apart the graphics mesh generator into its component parts. And so we need to, again, have one class that gets the points, and then one class that generates the normals, one that does triangles, and then a final one which brings them all together. So I'm going to need a bunch of data in here. I don't know how I'm going to store it yet, so I'll wait. Okay, so I'll call this the point. Um, generator system. And I think I'll start by just copying most of this because a lot of this information will be passed through. Um, for some reason, my scroll wheel doesn't want to play nice. There we go. So pretty anything that deals with triangles, we actually won't keep. Thankfully, we already have done all of this logic for the points, so... I'm hoping that it won't take too long to adapt it. Oops, that's the wrong thing. Yeah, I need to switch this to the battle. I also don't really like how I assign them right there. So I'll do it like this instead. And then we need the terrain gen state. Okay, so this triangle will not be passed or created in here at all. So I can delete that. And the try point. I'll leave this in here. 
Yeah, we can just keep the normal there, I think. Even though the system won't actually generate the normals. So we got no triangles. We do need to keep track of the vertices, though. Oops, too many T's. Um, I wonder... how I'm going to store this information. So I go to that. Okay, I need to change it to not be private. So, um, because this vertex... I guess they'll be stored on a per chunk basis. And then I also kind of need to store them on a per hex basis. Or at least I need to keep track of what points are part of each hexagon. And then I need to keep track of the neighbors. So maybe I'll do it like this. Um, hex cell. And it will have... Um, Should I assume that the points for each section are contiguous? I think I think that's safe. But then um one thing I also need to take into account is that each of these try points needs to have a list of its neighbors. It's starting to <laughs> store a lot of data. I don't think it's going to be a problem. If it is, I could maybe cut out... Actually, I don't know. Because the thing is, I want these points... Like, I want this to spit out this information and then for the normal and triangle generators not to actually need to care about it. Or, yeah, normal triangle generators. So if I want that to be the case, I need to somehow be able to reference all the neighbors from here. I guess one way is we don't actually include the normal. And then there'll be some points that have the same position but different blends, but I don't know, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't really know, like this map already seems pretty big. So I don't think that the maps will ever be gigantic. Okay, I'm probably like making, trying to make things more complicated than I need to be. And this will just be int neighbors. Can I actually do that though? Maybe, okay. I just need to s do like a list of vector threes for the neighbors. Oh, 
Although that like defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Because if I have to calculate the positions, then but I don't know any other way to do it. Let's see. So maybe Well, I guess yeah, there's going to need to be some information in this point so that the normal and triangle generators can know how to build their normals and triangles. So Okay, so I guess depending Let's see here. So there'll be a certain number of points here, and this will be the face, and then it'd be a number, a certain number of for each margin. And then I guess based on what type of margin this is, we'd already have all the points generated. So, oh, why is it playing? Oh, I just need to make this not public. Maybe, um, like I said, I'd like the cell not to have to depend on anything else, like any neighboring cells, so... And same for the margins, maybe. Let's see. Public, enum. Let's do it this way. Um... Let's call it a section. So we'd have the hex face. I always like to have zero be some default thing. And then a rectangle margin and a triangle. Let's just call it tri margin and rect margin just so they're shorter. And then we'll maybe have an index. To tell like where the section is on the on the map. Let's, let's see. The index for the actual hexagon is easy. We've converted back and forth between columns and rows. The margins, well, there's a certain number of margin. I guess it just depends on how I want to number them. Do something like... The bottom ones, like one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, and then we'd start up here. That might be the best. And then triangles are pretty simple. It's just like hexagon. Okay, so then we'd have points for the face. And so what information do I need to have here? Maybe I would actually only need the position. Oh no, I need to do the blend at least. But probably not the vertex because 
Um, the triangle builder could just assign vertexes to each point because it would know if they needed to be shared based on the mesh type. And basically, uh, the vertices would always be shared during, like on the, the points for the face, but then I think I'll have a separate array for the border, maybe. Um, and this will just be points. Okay, so yeah, here it will have, let's just, position and blend, I think are the only information we have to calculate here to make sense. Okay, I'll get rid of this. Although if I'm gonna put this inside, I might as well just put this enumeration inside as well. All right. Okay, so face is not is pretty easy. The neighbors is not that difficult, although we might need to figure out how to share code between generating the neighbors and then generating the face for each type. It's not too difficult, I don't think. All right, anyway, I think um, that's the best way to do it. So the terrain gen state well, then I just have a list of these mesh sections. All right, and we don't care about the number of vertices anymore because this class does not count them. I guess. Let's do that. Um, yeah, we won't actually, and we don't need to set up the mesh here, so that's one good thing. Okay, and this would be, okay, we just need the chunk index. All right, blueprint data, and then I'll clear the sections list. What's it complaining about? Cannot implicitly type. Oh. Yeah, this should be a list, um, and I should also create it here in the constructor. Let me click that. Alright, so yeah, we don't set up mesh. Okay, so cell, I'll leave this because, yeah, we create a margin depending on how the neighbors work. So this would be yeah, the X face. And then create margin. And then instead of having this equals equals, I'll just have a separate create margin try um, which I don't does not exist yet I'll move this down to the bottom 
Uh, I guess right here. And then this function needs to be renamed to create margin rectangle. Okay, and so if cell dot surface block row is zero, then we create this triangle. So actually take out this argument. Um, I'll go to it so it'll stop complaining to me. Okay, and if cell dot surface block column is zero, then we create a triangle here. Okay, and then we always create this triangle apparently. Now this code was correct, so I'm not gonna question it. And then we always create this triangle. Oh, it's not capitalized actually. All right. So we don't need that. Uh, we still need this. Most of this code will be the same, except change that a little bit. So we'll need to create a new section and then kind of pass the section in. And then this index will just be the cell index. Okay, so create hex face. Type is uh, hex face. Index is the cell index. And then we would pass that in here. So I don't need to pass a cell index anymore. But this is the ring and the corner. Okay, and then the point array. I guess I don't need to pass that either because that's part of the section. Section. Dot. Base. Okay, and then I just need to set it here. And it's going to complain because it's make new point for now. Oh, it's not complaining actually. Let's see, what do we need here? So we only need the point and the prototype and the blend. So I don't need to deal with this normal up anymore. Let's go ahead and update those functions now that I think about it. So this will just return a mesh section dot point. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. And then I think I would like to use the same functions when we create these neighbors, but we can just disregard the blend value, so it'll be fine. Okay, we don't care about anything to do with normals right now. We do still need the bump size and everything. Although not this part. Okay, I could simplify this a little bit, but it's okay. And again, no normal stuff. Okay, and yeah, no triangle in here. Uh, 
Okay, so now we're back to this part and I can get rid of this because it's doing triangles. Uh, what's it complaining about? It takes three. Oh, I forgot to get rid of the extra normal up arguments I added earlier. Okay, gotta change all this again. All right, so we got this and all I have to do to update this is just take care of that. Cause I think the code that figures out the normals I mean, the actual points is fine. Um, so this should change to mesh section. And this changes to section index. And then this is section base. Okay, and the margin stuff. So I can get rid of that because it's just dealing with triangles. I will need a little bit of this because this code is dealing with the margin triangle as well. Okay, so for the margin, I just create another mesh section. I need to figure out how I'm going to count these. So there's two ways. I could just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or I could do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, ten. The problem is, well, it doesn't really matter, but I think um, this margins are these margins. Well, I mean, they're going to be constant, so I could figure out the counting either way. But I kind of like counting all the zigzag ones first before I do the sideways ones just because it makes it I think I'll make the math a little simpler although well either way I should really think about given a corner point the easiest way to find these uh these three values because I'm going to need them to figure out the neighbors. Um, let me see. I think I'll make another little diagram because this one's already busy enough. Um, actually, yeah, a map would normally go like this, so. So we have a 3x3 three three map. I'll at least color in the, the simple triangle, I think. So, 3. So let's turn off snapping. I don't really, it doesn't need to be exact, so I don't care. If the corners don't match up. 
Okay, so there's triangles. Actually, there's triangles. Okay, there's triangles at every bit, even on the... Yeah, this goes like that, and then... This... Oops, I didn't mean to scale it. Okay, now the origin's all messed up. Um, also, blue is a little... This is too dark, I think. Because I'm going to have... The numbers on top of them. Okay, so yeah, now I just created all these, but I think I'll just make one hexagon and then duplicate it. Okay, so let's... Um, this isn't going to be super pretty, but... Oh, you know, I don't even need to have these colored in. I think since just since they're white, it'll be obvious. All right, so I'll have that, and then I'll need to get rid of the duplicates, obviously. So it has one, and this should have two. Okay, I think I got them all. Oh, right there. All right, so now let's number these. Um, this. Well, the hexagons are really easy. This will be zero. I think, yeah, the cells, yeah, it goes along the columns first. These will go from zero to eight. I thought we were done. <laughs> All right, and then, um, so I think for triangles, the easiest way would be to go like this. So I'll try that and then see if I can find a pattern there. Because what would be nice if it, I could somehow derive these triangle indexes from the, uh, Hexagon index. I guess we might need to go vice versa, or I could just supply the cell index. You know what? Maybe the easiest way to do this is instead of just trying to have a numbering for each of these, I just supply the cell index and then the side. Because that would work for all these, and then it would be really easy to figure out what the neighbors are. Although, how do I get that? Oh no, I won't need to get the mesh section of the neighbors, so that's not a big deal. Okay, so let's change this again to cell index and decide. Okay, so yeah, I don't really... Well, this diagram, I guess, still might be useful, but we don't really need to number the triangles. <laughs> I 
Um, excuse me. Uh, let's see. So is this going to figure out the number of points in the rectagon, uh, rectagon, in the rectangle, which we already know. Okay, so the cell index is fine, and then I just pass the side here. So that makes that a lot simpler. I was just no reason to complicate things. The section dot face. And that is just a new mesh section point. And we don't need to pass that except, and now we don't have to pass anything except the section here. Um, and that's triangles, isn't it? So yeah, I can get rid of that. I guess really I don't have to have a separate function for this anymore <laughs> anymore. I already know that. Okay, we already have the number of points in the small row. All right. So, theoretically this works now, except I don't figure out the neighbors. I guess, how will I um, index that? So I think every point could have a variable number of neighbors. Right now, I think every point has six neighboring points, but I could see that not always being the case. And I think it'd be better if we tried to not force that. And so that Makes me think, how will we store that? Maybe we just have a list in this point structure. We're going to have a lot of duplication, though, if I do that. I think no matter what, we'll have to have a list here because it would have to have a list of integers. Well, that would save a little space, at least. And then we just put all those neighboring points in this neighbor array. If I really wanted to, I could change this to like a list of bytes because I doubt that the neighbor array will ever get bigger than 256, but... Okay, and since this is now... A, t um, a reference type, there's no reason to have this as a structure, so I'll change it to a class. And I guess we won't really know the size of the neighbors either, so might as well make this a list too. Okay, so what I should do is like pull this out. So that we can get the start point. But I need to be able to call it from here. So yeah, what I need to do is we need to find the neighbors for the these points. So uh points on the last ring need to have neighbor arrays um let 
Let me see. Uh, well, things like inside the face, they also have neighbors, but... Okay, I think that the triangle and normal generators can, would be able to figure out which points are which themselves, because we do that. That was the other... Yeah, those other functions that figure out the triangles did that, so... It's really just, we need to have... Well, with that information, we don't really need to keep this list. We just need to populate these values. And then whatever calculates the neighbors could also figure out the neighbors again later on. Um, I guess the question is, do I want to have... Like another class that just figures out the topology of the the terrain and in other words figures out the neighbors for every point for both of those classes that might be a good idea but that's just going to be a lot of data we could probably I don't know. I'll need to think about that. Speaking about thinking, it's about time for lunch. Okay. Well, I'm kind of happy we did this, or I did this, because I need to... Like, I kept on saying that the old graphics mesh generator was getting way too big, and it was going to be hard to debug. And we were already getting to that point. And now since I'm able to break everything up, I get the question is just how much do I want to break everything up and how much data do I want to store as opposed to having each section recalculate it and then if it has to recalculate the data how do I make sure that the logic or the code isn't duplicated multiple times. Yeah it's just a lot to think about. But I kind of like the way this is going because, for instance, if we change one block, then we could maybe just only run the point generator system on a couple cells. And then it could just reuse the information and then um, the graphics mesh generator would just rebuild the mesh and we wouldn't have to run the whole thing again during play time. So that is um, one great thing, good thing about this. Yeah, I think um, probably having like a a class that figures out the neighbors for every point would be a good idea. I guess I just need to decide is that too much data to store or not. I don't know, that's all. Uh, I'll need to do some calculations to see like what the maximum data would be for a really big map. But like I said, I mean, our map right now is eight by eight and it seems pretty gigantic anyway. So I don't know how much bigger we need to go. I guess it that would just take play testing to see. But anyway, I'm gonna go get some lunch. So I hope you all have a great day and um, I'll be back tomorrow at noon Eastern at the latest. I keep on wanting to do other streams, but I just haven't had a chance. Um, but we'll see. Um, go ahead, feel free to follow me here on Twitch or on my Twitter, and I'll notify you if I do go live. And um, I also have a YouTube channel if you want to catch up on any streams you might have missed, and a Discord channel where you can chat with me and other viewers throughout the day. We'd love to have you there. And... Um, I'll put links in chat and I'll also check my video description if you're interested. I think that's about it. So I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.